Welcome everyone to Vitit Gujarati taking on Peter Swidler in their 7th blitz game. This is the penultimate game of their match and Vitit opens with e4. Swidler goes for the Sicilian. He is well known for his knight orf. Let's see if that happens on the board. Knight f6, knight c3 and a6 on the board. Bishop g5, Vitit goes for one of the most aggressive setups. Knight d7, a3. This is a Vitit Gujarati special because here Black can go e6, g6, all of these moves and Vidit is remaining flexible now. So once g6 is played, now Vidit can develop his bishop here to c4. He's already had games against Grishchuk and Tom Kantans in this opening and Vidit has done pretty well, scoring 1.5 out of 2. Now that the pawn is on g6 and e6 is unlikely, putting the bishop here makes a lot of sense. And in case if the opponent had gone e6 there uh, after knight bd7 a3 e6 then you could go for this queen e2 and quickly long castle line so g6 with it does go bishop c4 and now bishop g7 here he puts his bishop back on a2 black's position looks pretty fine yes queen c7 just putting the queen on a very very ideal square and with it brings queen d2 with the idea of long castle now generally you don't want to short castle so quickly because h4 h5 would be very powerful so as black you want to maintain the flexibility a good idea could be to play h6 followed by b5 bishop b7 and keep the king flexible on e8 this is what peter swidler is taking his time for he's trying to understand what would be a good way to play here and two minutes 22 seconds with it has 2 minutes 30 seconds it's 3 minutes plus 2 second increment game peter is uh, plays his pawn up to h6 now you can either move your bishop back to h4 or you can just speed it up by taking on f6 once you take on f6 what essentially you are trying to do is you are trying to maybe long castle that's what with it does he does he takes it knight takes and you want to long castle that's what he does now the point is even though you lost a very important bishop you have free flowing play and your bishop on a2 is beautifully positioned b5 makes a lot of sense later on if you can open up the queen side with b4 that would be amazing with it continues his play in the center now castling should be preferred here it's a normal move it's a decent move and would make a lot of sense uh, Peter Swidler might be a bit worried after castling because as we know h4 could be a plan also rook h e1 followed by uh, e5 because rook h e1 the point is you can go bishop g4 here the bishop becomes useful but once you put your bishop on b7 then there's no way to bring your bishop this side so in that respect short castling is a very very flexible move Peter Swidler now has to make his move. He is down to 1 minute 16 seconds and he plays bishop b7. He attacks the e4 pawn but as we discussed, this might be committing the bishop a bit prematurely. With it brings his rook to e1 and now he castles. But is e5 an idea here? Well, Swidler is not really afraid of e5 because takes, takes, knight g4, the bishop attacks the pawn and the knight and the queen so that is not so good but with it can go f5 that is possible but he first tucks his king away and now and now e5 makes a lot of sense just hitting here in the center and he plays it great move by peter swidler he's getting a fine position with it goes back with his knight and now just taking on f4 this is a typical sicilian position you know take take yes d6 is weak but so is e4 but he instead goes for a very surprising decision, rook f d8. And this means that Vidit can actually start to launch an a kingside attack with g4. He goes f5. He plays it. And g5, no, this is positionally not so good. There you see Swidler shaking his head. He is not at all happy because I think he seems to have missed something. The reason, I mean, g takes f5 would have been a nice move, actually. Because if with it takes, e takes f5, you can go b4. You can also then later on get a successful d5. 
but now after g5 with it plonks his bishop on d5 rook to c8 played and now with it chops off on b7 he takes and puts his knight on d5 so any end game would favor white because the bishop on g7 is a pretty dismal piece he goes rook c5 his idea is that he wants to take on d5 and force a pawn to come here but with it must not do that he must maintain a piece on d5 so he takes on f6 bishop takes f6 and now very much possible to open up the position with h4 you cannot push or take the pawn because queen takes h6 is possible he goes h4 good move by Vidit Gujarati and now he is doing very well Swidler actually sacrifices a pawn his point is if you take here then rook c d5 would be very very good for black but the the reason why this move is not working is because you can take on g5 now if you take his idea is to take on e4 unleashing an attack on the queen oh he takes it he takes it he takes on g5 with it has actually called for peter's calculation what is it that you're going to do the point here is to move your queen to e3 hitting the rook on c5 that's exactly what he does fantastic calculation by with it so the knight is actually not hanging the rook is hanging you need to now do something about it but the position looks already bad because the bishop is also hanging he takes on d1 rook takes d1 and now how do you save both your pieces well Swidler says I'm going bishop e7 saving my rook yes the position is bad you can take on h6 you can play g6 uh, and you know taking on f3 might not be enough because the king is very weak just for example if you take here take here then f6 is already very powerful but he goes knight d2 and there he play oh bishop g5 blundering the rook he just gives that up knight d2 the idea was to take on e4 here but Swidler had to play something like rook d5 but he just took on g5 and it was a rook blunder the pressure got to him with it played a very nice game actually here and he managed to win uh, and a very interesting opening idea that we all can learn from.